Hey Radiant Souls, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather Mays. I am an intuitive counselor, animal communicator, author, artist, energy healer, coach, a whole lot of things. What I am on a mission to do is to empower and embolden others to connect to their divine radiant light and to honor the sacred connection with all life. And I do that in a number of ways, one of them being a monthly energy forecast. So within the forecast video, there are some different components. We're going to talk about just a general conversation around the energy that will be prevalent or could be prevalent for the month for those of you watching. Now, with that in mind, that is information that I channel through my guides, and they ask that it kind of be presented as specific to a certain month, but it may not be. It may not kind of tee up for you in that particular month. You may come to this video months from now, years from now, and it still feels relevant, and that's okay because energy is fluid. Time is not really um, as compact and third dimensional a thing as we think it is. It's, it's not even linear, but that's how our minds interpret it. But for the majority of us watching, what we will see is uh, an energy and a discussion about energy for March 2022. So we talk about that and then the guides usually hang kind of all of this on a certain word or phrase. So we will talk about that. There is an animal totem that steps forward to support us or kind of illuminate the message. And then there is an element of the natural world as well that we'll talk about that supports and underlies this message or um, underpins it for us. And uh, then we have a, a brief affirmation that we all can use. And then there is an intuitive channeled art piece that I pull through um, to match up to the message. And so we're going to go through all of that today. I hope you'll stay with me. And I so appreciate you watching. And I just, I love your support so much. So in January of 2022, we talked about atonement and being like breaking down that word to be at one with something within ourselves or in general at one with ourselves. In February, we talked about translucence and really pulling through light and information, but also allowing yourselves to broadcast light and information as well. And just clearing those blockages to let as much of that light and truth come through as it could. So for March, what we're feeling in the collective is, <laughs> I don't think this will be any surprise to us. We're feeling bombarded. We're feeling, um, spun around, we're feeling off balance, we're feeling on guard. There is a lot of information coming at us and with that information comes energy. So it feels like, you know, a thousand slings and arrows. There are things coming into our awareness constantly and and some of us are doing that or, or experiencing that on a global level with recent current events. But we're also, many of us are feeling that on a personal level. Things are changing and they're shifting rapidly. Timelines that you think you're on are swapping out, switching. You you may have heard the phrase like a thousand sliding doors. There's all these different uh, realities, different decisions, different points, pivot points almost in our lives that are flying past us at an increased rate um, like we've not really seen in quite some time. And for a lot of us, that's very overwhelming and very daunting. And we may even feel a little indecisive, like you can have a couple of options available to you and you feel like, you know, yeah, I think I like option A. By the end of the day, option B may feel better for you. So honor that within yourself because things are shifting and twisting at such a high rate a frequency that it's it's not you, it's what's around you. So the word for the month, the kind of theme for this energy or how we can best support ourselves through this energy, the word is calibrate. So if you look at the definition of, of calibrate, there are two different definitions and I think they both really apply here. So it is to carefully assess, set or adjust carefully assess, set, or adjust, or to correlate the readings of an instrument against a standard. 
in order to check the accuracy. So I really like that second one. And if we think of ourselves as both the instrument and the standard. So what I'm being guided to talk about today is really in every decision point that you make, in every moment of your day, anytime you feel pulled or stretched or shifted or suppressed or exposed, anything that kind of takes you out of your your center, your comfort zone. Find that thing for you that you can focus on. Um, It could be a word. It could be something like love or faith or belief, or it could be a concept or an idea like, oh, I see my relationship going this way, or I see abundance coming in 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 this particular way. And it's not so much the particulars of what you see, but calibrating to what that will feel like for you. And already line yourself up in that energy. If you want to feel love, be love, be grateful, be happy, be joyful. All of the things that you think that thing will bring you, be those now, calibrate to that energy. And it may, like I talked about, the energy is swift and fast and things are shifting and changing. So it may be that you calibrate back to that standard, whatever that is for yourself, throughout the day. Because when we don't really have that calibration, we don't have that focus for ourselves, we do feel like we're stretched and pulled like taffy. Like things come along and they they sway us and shift us. So calibrating allows you to stay and find your way back to you. I like to think of it, um, if you use a GPS app or something in your car when you're driving somewhere and you know, if, if you're out on a nice casual drive and you maybe take a road that wasn't on the map, you know how the, the app will say it's recalculating. Well, it's recalculating to still take you to your destination. So it's calibrating. And that's the kind of energy we're talking about this month. But why it is coming up as so important this month is because we're going to be challenged. We're going to find that shifting and twisting and pulling like taffy because things are going to come at us at such a fast rate. So if you don't know already what it is that you can calibrate to, that would be a great journal prompt for you or something for you to meditate on a little bit to find what that is for you. And it may be different, different days, different times of the day, but what are those key elements, those standards that your instrument can calibrate to, can compare to, to make sure you're on the right track? So when I say what your instrument can calibrate to, what I wanna share with you too, and some of you may be very aware of this, but, but some of us aren't because we aren't really taught this very frequently growing up. Um, our bodies are not meant to just be this random collection of cells, organs, tissues, bones, whatever. They're meant to be instruments of information and we are meant to calibrate to our standard and compare what we're getting in the environment to what feels right for us. We talked about this on my uh, in my solar community call last week. You know how you often say, oh, I had a gut feeling about something. And we joke that that's usually 2020 hindsight, right? You usually feel like, oh, I should have followed my gut. Well, your gut is an instrument of information for you. There are energy centers within the body that are attuned to and supposed to translate information that comes to you from your environment. But when we don't know that, when we aren't taught how to work with that, you know, we just might walk around with a headache for weeks and not understand that that's maybe that energy center telling us, hey, something's off in this particular area. Or we may have digestive issues and just think, oh, I'm going to pop a, you know, a Pepsid or take some Pepto-Bismol or something, not sponsored by either of those companies. Um, But really, it could be that I need to shift something in my environment. So can we have actual medical conditions? Yes, I'm not saying that. But I think it can benefit us to use our bodies, our instruments, to help sort through the information in the environment. So 
you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, get in touch with me. I, I'm starting an energy healing course or I'm launching an energy healing course later in the spring. And, and I'll talk a lot about that. We'll dive into more detail there. But I just really want to mention it here since we're talking about calibrating an instrument. So when we look at cal that calibration, I want you to kind of feel into your body too. If there's a challenging situation that comes up, where do you feel it? Is it that kind of ugh, in your gut? Or is it uh, a racing heartbeat? Is it, do you get a little twitchy? Um, I'm a foot tapper when I'm upset about something um, because that can be connected to grounding and the root chakra or the root energetic center, which is foundation and tribe and, and security. And when that's threatened for me, I get a little twitchy. Um, <laughs> So, you know, whatever that is for you, start playing around and seeing how your body communicates back to you and how you can calibrate back to everything lined up, everything feels centered, you feel like you, regardless of what's going on around you. So when we look at the animal totem that wants to come in and, and help us support or, or give us some more information, paint a clearer picture for us about calibrating, this month, it's one of my favorites, it's a dolphin. So if you think of the echolocation of a dolphin, when they are swimming underwater, there's not a lot of light, they are using, they are sending out frequency and letting that bounce back to kind of define the boundaries of objects. So in that same way, in a sense, they are calibrating. They are saying, this is you know, the frequency I'm sending out, Here's the frequency that comes back. Their brains, they actually feel it, I think, through their jaws and it translates to their ears, which translate to their brains. So there's all of that calibration to determine what something is. What is the shape of it, the texture of it, um, friend or foe, big or small, whatever. So within our own calibrating, what can we kind of bounce off of things in our environment Compa do that comparison of our standard, pass it through our instrument to see where we are calibrated and how we can calibrate. And then the element of the natural world that wants to come through and, and offer some guidance is a tree. And you've heard the saying, it's one of those quotes that nobody really knows where it started or who it's attributed to, but the saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So when we think of a tree, we've got those gorgeous roots that come down, but what helps make a tree strong and tall and straight is the breeze. It's the challenge. It's the things that try to pull it off center that help develop the center, help calibrate. So for the affirmation this month, I know I'm going through this a little quick, but you guys can hang with that. For the affirmation this month, here is our sentence that if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. But um, the affirmation is, I honor my divine truth in every moment and I calibrate to my personal highest and best. Let me say it again. I honor my divine truth in every moment and I calibrate to my personal highest and best. So just a nice reminder to do that kind of reset, that calibration. And the guidance was to include the, the personal highest and best and your, your personal divine truth because that will be different for everyone. And that's one of the challenges in our world today. Yes, there are universal truths, no question. But there are also personal truths of perspective. And we're often chastised for those or asked to abandon those personal truths that we have. And part of calibrating is saying, no, uh, that's what I believe to be true for me. I honor that you have a different opinion, but this is mine and I'm calibrating to it. And I ask that it serves my highest and best good. So when we look at the intuitive art that came up and I'm going to glance over here, you guys are going to see it come up right now, but I'm looking at it on my computer screen and it is very richly colored. And what came through for that 
if you're familiar with chakras or the energy centers, these are all like in the background. These are the colors of those energy centers. So really, again, bringing that body online and into your calibration, using it as an instrument of truth for you. And then doing those calculations um, that help you calibrate to your own center, to your divine truth in every moment, and to your highest and best good. So that, my friends, is the energy forecast for March. I would love to hear any comments and feedback that you have. Drop them below. You will also see a link to where you can download this art for free through the month of March. It's also available for purchase in a couple of other ways. If you like it and you want to see it on some things like a journal or a mug or whatever, um, I offer that for people because I've been asked to offer that. So um, thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I will see you soon. Have a most amazing day. Bye.